Hi everyone, and welcome to episode 17 of the Life in Norway show. Today we welcome Mariam, host of the Norwegian language podcast Hallo Norge, which of course simply is Norwegian for Hello Norway. On the podcast, Mariam interviews Norwegian experts in topics ranging from language to history to music to food, all in the Norwegian language. On today's show, I'll ask Mariam in English all about her podcast and what life is like in Norway compared to her home city of Cairo in Egypt. You can find out more about Mariam and her podcast on our show notes page at lifeinnorway.net forward slash podcast. We'll start off the show today with a short clip from Hallo Norge to set the scene. It's only a few seconds long, so if you don't understand Norwegian, please bear with us and I'm sure you'll enjoy the rest of the interview. Happy listening. Jag heter Mariam. Jag kommer från Egypt och har bott i Norge i två år. Det är er så mycket jag lurer på om detta land. Och i denna serie får jag lov till att ställa alla frågor mina till experter på olika grejer som har med Norge att göra. Ah, jag gläder mig. Hallå Norge. Hallå Norge. Hallå Norge. Hallå Norge. That was the voice of Mariam Kurilos, host of the Hallo Norge podcast, and she joins us today on the Life in Norway show. Originally from the Egyptian capital Cairo, Mariam moved to Oslo two years ago, where she currently works for Save the Children Norway. Mariam is a language and food enthusiast, as well as being the host of Hallo Norge. Mariam, welcome to the show. Thank you so much. Right. Before we get into the podcast, I have to ask, what brought you to Norway? Uh, love. <laughs> My uh, husband is Norwegian, so this is why we moved to Norway. I see. Uh, did you meet in Cairo or on your travels somewhere? Yes, yes, yes. We met in Cairo. And uh, of course, we, at first I started to, I tried to communicate with him in my Swedish at the time. But he didn't understand my Swedish, really. So, and I didn't understand his Norwegian. So it was really fun at the start because we uh, we met in English and then we kept speaking English together for a long time. We actually shifted to Norwegian only maybe two and a half years ago or something. Okay, now that begs the question, Mariam. How did you know how to speak Swedish? I uh, lived in Sweden. Sweden in 2010 I was uh, doing a project uh, on actually um, so cu- cultural understanding so I was traveling around in different schools in uh, Sweden to talk about you know uh, racism and how wrong that is and stereotypes and prejudice and uh, yeah, so this is how I, well, and as you mentioned, I'm a language enthusiast. So I decided while I'm in Sweden that I wanted to do those workshops in Swedish. Mm. I lived with a host family or a couple of host families, and I insisted that they only speak to me in Swedish. And uh, this is how I learned Swedish. <laughs> That's a very brave move. Uh, so when you first moved to Norway, I guess your first impressions were colored a little by the fact that you'd already experienced living in Scandinavia. So perhaps I'll, I'll widen the usual question a little bit to say, what are the biggest differences between a life in Egypt and a life in Scandinavia? Oh, so much. <laughs> uh, to start with the winter uh, is completely different. Mm. Because, uh, of course, we know and, you know, I knew it's, it was going to be cold. And just to add, you know, I, when I was in Sweden, I, didn't, I wasn't there for the entire winter. So I didn't really experience the Scandinavian winter. But moving here, it was how dark it gets that really got to me. Because I'm used to sunshine every day. Um, just maybe two rainy days a year or something. So <laughs> that was a big difference. But of course, other things were like, you know, how you can, you know, how efficient things are in a way, and how when the train, when the at the train station it says the train leaves at twelve o three, it leaves at twelve o three. So uh, this is also quite different than in uh, in Egypt, among many other things. You know, the the food culture. Um, 
even I, for me also one difference was like swimming in the city that people actually take uh, you know hop into the into the into the water in the city by the opera this was quite strange <laughs> <laughs> have you adopted a norwegian lifestyle yeah, and i'm thinking here in terms of you know the the food you eat the times you eat the things you do on the weekend or are you still uh, do you still lead a, a typical uh, egyptian life or are you somewhere in the middle so it's funny you asked me this question because today i when i went to work i was wearing a gray sweater black pants black shoes black coat a black <laughs> scarf and then my colleague looked at me who had like pink or something. She's like, you've become more Norwegian than I am. And I started to realize this slowly that I have become, I've really adopted this Norwegian lifestyle even without recognizing it, if you know what I mean. Especially in like, I used to make fun of Norwegian colors, you know, in the winter and how everyone looks the same. And it's like the, 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 the brightest color you can get is like blue, you know, mm. and now I feel the same and I have dinner like I feel like I'm late for dinner now you know <laughs> I can't believe I'm gonna have dinner at seven while you know uh, back home you know, basically lunch is the biggest meal and we have lunch at five sure. so uh, so uh, yeah in that sense of course and like I, I notice this a lot or I can't leave the house without taking my Tron pills you know it's I, I don't know if I should be happy or should I worry about this you know <laughs> Well, you've uh, you've clearly learned a lot about Norwegian lifestyle in a relatively short space of time, which brings me nicely onto your podcast. So be before we start talking about the content, uh, how how did the podcast happen? What's the story behind it? Well, it was um, last year. Um, yes, it was last year, 20, wait, 2017, that I... Um, I learned that there was a producer in Norway that was that wanted to start a podcast for people who are new in Norway. But the focus at first was refugees. Mm. And I reached out to Pia, our producer, and I just, you know, we, we met and we discussed stuff. And then we started brainstorming about, you know, or I started actually asking her a lot of questions, you know. And we, of course, we spoke in Norwegian and I had a lot of questions. And she was like, you know what? Uh, Maybe that's, you know, what we're going to do. We're just going to let you ask your questions. And um, it's it's really been interesting because we thought that at first this would be a podcast for people who are new in Norway, who also wonder about the same things. But uh, the more I ask Pia, the more she realized this is actually something that could be interesting for Norwegians as well. I see. That's, that sounds very familiar to me because... Uh, on the Life in Norway website and on the podcast, we do actually have a large number of uh, Norwegian listeners and readers who are just really curious to see how foreigners view their their, their country and their society. Um, can you tell us a bit about the format of the show? It's It's an interview show similar to this, right? Yeah, so basically we invite a certain expert in a certain field. Uh, for instance, we had this episode... Uh, where we ask a language professor, Scandinavian language professor at the University of Oslo, Arne Torp, uh, uh, like a man who's written thousands, many, many, not thousands, of books about Nor the Norwegian language and other, you know, uh, Scandinavian languages. And uh, we invite him to the studio and basically we just shoot questions. And it's... Um, it's always really funny to see how... Usually I have some questions prepared, but it's uh, usually new questions, you know, come along when uh, when I get especially like amazing answers that uh, I didn't think that, uh, sp especially when it comes to the Norwegian language, a lot of a lot of things that I learned from this this man made me like show off when I went to work because I had something to tell my Norwegian friends and they didn't know. Um, so this is basically the format, and usually it's it's so funny. It, especially mentioning Professor uh, Arne Torp, because I remember when he, um, when we were done, he said, I didn't think it was going to be so much fun. He <laughs> thought it was, it was really, really, he, he also, he, he said that he learned a lot because of course he got to see the Norwegian language from the complete outside. So it was me and another person from Syria, Hassan, who interviewed Arne and he was really, uh, he was really happy <laughs> and we were very happy. 
Was that your favourite episode or are there any others that stick out in your memory? Um, I think this was definitely one of my favourites, but also the one on uh, Norwegian, um, uh, uh, so uh, aventure, like the sto- storytelling and uh, and uh, and Norwegian uh, literature and stuff. This was very very interesting, because I think the most interesting part is that I didn't expect um, our guest to uh, to be, to start comparing Norwegian heroes to Tupac, and <laughs> <laughs> it was really. It, I think it's just the surprises that come uh, along in the interviews. I think this is what makes it really fascinating. So this was fun, but of course, as well, our last episode on Norwegian history was really, really interesting, especially that we got um, uh, a very uh, well-known uh, historian, Norwegian historian Kosten Alnes. And I think he was really happy to be telling, I don't know how often he's done that, telling the story of Norway to someone who's new to Norway. So I think mm-hmm. he did it with a lot of passion. And I Really, really enjoyed this. Yeah, I have actually just finished listening to that episode and it was uh, especially interesting. Um, it, it's also a very interesting podcast to listen to for someone who's learning Norwegian because you're you're obviously fluent in Norwegian and I think anyone who listens to the show will be, will be impressed at how quickly you've managed to pick up the language and, and develop it. And I think that is also reflected in your interviewees who speak maybe slightly slower than they would normally when they're they're speaking to a fellow Norwegian. So I can I can recommend the podcast for anyone who's learning the language as well. But just on on that topic of learning Norwegian, um to what extent are you are you nervous in in presenting the show in what must be your I guess your third or maybe even fourth language? Yeah. Not nervous at all. <laughs> If there's anything, any piece of advice I can give anyone in regards to that, I think Norwegian is my fourth language. It's not to be afraid to make mistakes. And when you listen to my, when I listen even to the podcast, I'm like, well, this was wrong, but I don't care, Mm. you know? And I feel like this is something that really helped me a lot when I, um, I would say I I owe a lot to my Swedish, you know, because this is, this language really taught me, I'm like, it's okay, you know, I'm not at at an age that I can, you know, be fluent in a language without any accents, you know, mm. and I, and I, and I think this is why also I, I dare to do it and I dare to ask those questions even when I mispronounce what I'm asking about <laughs> and it's really funny because people get it, you know, and it's, uh, it's, it's, it's only natural, you know. I, w- I, I myself, I wouldn't trust myself. I've lived in Norway for two years and I'm completely fluent in Norwegian, not making any grammatical mistakes, especially prepositions. I get my prepositions wrong all the time. Mm-hmm. Who gets the Norwegian prepositions right, you know, when they've lived here for two years? So I think it's just, uh, I'm not, I'm not uh, nervous. And, but to be honest, you know, I, um, I also think that this is part of the show, you know that uh, we, we're not supposed to be ashamed to ask or make mistakes. So right now, you're, the podcast is, shall we say, a hobby, uh, and your real job is working for uh, Save the Children Norway. Uh, do you want to talk a little bit about what you do day to day and also how easy or difficult it was to find that job as a foreigner living in Oslo? Yes. So, uh, yeah, the podcast is a hobby, um, and I work as a senior advisor um, at Save the Children, and my main um, uh, field is protection of children in armed conflict. This is, uh, it's, it will take more than just an episode to talk about what I do, but pretty much it has a lot to do with the monitoring of the situation of children in different conflicts and uh, working on reports and research, and, uh, and as well as advocacy. Um, was it easy finding a job? Not at all. Um, it's very difficult. And it's the most difficult part, of course, is when someone um, moves to Norway and you don't have anything n- necessarily Norwegian in your resume. Uh, and uh, as well as the language barrier, you know, because I, 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 most of I, I work a lot. Um, most of the work I produce is in English, but the meetings, everything, the communication with my colleagues, everything is in Norwegian. Mm. 
but I chose that too. You know, I chose to do that. Um, and I was, uh, I made sure that, you know, this is how my, my colleagues know that I want to do that. Uh, but it has a lot to do as well with the, net, you know, the network that you have when you, when you come here that people are not necessarily uh, know what you could do, you know. And um, it's very difficult. It, it took, uh, it took me, I was lucky because it took me one year, you know, to, uh, to find a job. Um, but in the meantime, when I, um, when I, you know, this is, I, I took Norwegian classes, but I didn't really take Swedish classes. And I used this time, you know, to try to be better, you know, and improve and learn. But it's not easy. And uh, especially in the winter, when you have to, when I moved, my case was different because when I moved to Norway, my first winter, I didn't yet have my residence permit. So I didn't have my work permit. And this was difficult, you know. So I did a lot of cooking and a lot of music and a lot of writing and a lot of my other stuff um, to just, you know, to to occupy myself. It's interesting that we tend to hear on the show the same story time and again from people that have found a job. And that's the importance of not being afraid to speak Norwegian uh, to get that job even if on the face of it you'll be using English in the job, and also yeah. the importance of networking in, in person. Uh, we, we talk about both of those things extensively in, uh, in our book, How to Find a Job in Norway, um, and people often you know, write back and say, oh, it's, it's not that easy, it's not that easy. And of course it's not. You have to actually do those two things if, uh, yeah. if your aim is, is to find a job in Norway. So yeah. it's interesting to hear, hear that, that that strategy worked for you. Yeah. Uh, what, what does the future hold for you uh, w with the podcast? So we have two more episodes left to record. Um, and I'm very excited. One will be on Norwegian humor and oh. the other is on Norwegian politics. And um, we possibly will be having a third episode, but it's... I'm, I'm hoping it will be a special edition for Christmas, but I don't know what we haven't decided yet what we're going to do. But um, so this is it for now. And we're hoping that the good thing about this podcast is like you can listen to it in 10 years and it's still, you know, it's still uh, relevant because <laughs> um, especially the first, you know, uh, episodes or I hope, of course, culture, you know, and everything is not uh, is dynamic, you know, and things change. But I think it's still relevant with the language, with the food, with the with the society and history, everything. So I think it's, um, I hope it really is used for educational purposes as well as for people that are new in Norway. I honestly, um, I honestly wish I, there was a podcast as well like this when I first moved, for someone that is so curious like myself, you know, and I wish I could, I wish I could reach out to that podcast and be like, can you please ask about this? And can you please ask about this? So maybe, I don't know, maybe if it's like we, we, we get more support and we know that there are listeners, more listeners and more topics that we could discuss potentially, you know, maybe this is something that could uh, continue. That's good to hear. Uh, I'm sure there's really is an, a never ending list of topics that you could potentially talk about i mean my website's been running for more or less seven years now and and you know we still don't run out of articles to no. to publish so there's definitely potential there i think speaking of politics i mean this is a really interesting time in norway we, we won't go into detail uh, on on the show but there's um there's a lot of discussions, shall we say, going on at the highest level of politics in Norway right now to do with the government and the budget for next year. So to what extent will your interviews be diving into current issues? Will it be more about the political system here or are you going to be looking at some of the, the current issues? Um, well, it's really the, we have always one hour <laughs> uh, to record. And um, what we're trying to do is... Um, as much as I would like to dive into current, I'll try to dive into current issues, but I can't do anything in detail because at the end of the day, this is really like, it's like ABCs, you know, it's very, very basic podcast and it's meant to be for the ones who actually don't know what's Turtinga, what's the, what's the name of the Norwegian parliament. Mm. Um, so, uh, of course, we will touch upon it and we do in other episodes, like the one we talked about Norwegian economy. And uh, and of course, when we discussed um, 
the so climate issues when we interviewed the uh, the DNT and um, when, but this one I think it would be mostly about uh, how many parties are there you know and what is why is the parliament called Sturtinga and why is it not called just Noshke Parliament the Norwegian Parliament so it's just basically easy stuff <laughs> to start with but I would I would love to have like uh, 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 another mm. episode just focusing on maybe that could be the next show david you know focusing on one <laughs> one issue at a time <laughs> excellent well i look forward to listening to that one mariam what is the community or or i should rephrase that is there a community of people from egypt and elsewhere in uh, the middle east and, and northern africa in oslo um, is there much of an expat, expat community? Uh, do you have events or, or do you very much um, hang around with your, your husband and your Norwegian friends? Uh, and my cat. <laughs> and, and my cat. cat. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, there's actually, um, uh, there, there's, a, there's a big uh, community from, uh, from the Middle East and North Africa, but not many Egyptians, you know, like I, or I have... The ones I've actually met and they're in my circle are ones that I knew from Egypt. So this is actually very uh, interesting. But um, there is and there are lots of events and especially, you know, with the with the um, Oslo World uh, Music Festival, mm. the Film Frasseur, the Human Rights, Human Wrongs Film Festival. Um, I think like I'm very lucky to be also part of a community that is very culturally active. So in that sense, it's um, it's really good. But I also have a lot of Norwegian friends and a lot of Norwegian uh, colleagues. And uh, and uh, yeah, so it's um, I feel very lucky to have uh, both, you know, a community from home and a community from second home. Uh, as well as a, a cat <laughs> from Nor- from Norway. <laughs> what are the most common questions you get about your homeland from Norwegians? Really curious to know. Uh, it's really interesting that you ask this because at first uh, it would be like how's the situation back home mm. and, you know, uh, of course, a lot of things about how many people have been to Sharm el-Sheikh and, you know, uh, the, all the diving areas and stuff. But now it's about Mohammed Salah, you know, the football player in uh, Liverpool. <laughs> and course. I'm really, and I, I, I would like to believe that I'm his biggest fan, at least in Norway. So I feel very honored to be asked, you know, how's Salah doing? How's his shoulder? You know, when he dislocated his shoulder. Mm. And I think it's very nice <laughs> that I get asked about how Mohammed Salah's shoulder is doing, you know. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so basically it's been like that now. And I, I really like it, you know, I, I would like to get more questions, in, you know, and I really encourage Norwegians not to be ashamed, you know, mm-hmm. to ask more questions. One interesting question I got, and I thought it was really fascinating. Someone asked me about how the tube system works in Egypt, the metro. Right. I was fascinated, you know, because no one ever asks you. No one ever asks me about, you know, transportation. <laughs> so it was, um, it was really, really fun. Okay, so if you want to be asked questions about Egypt, let's uh, let's get on with that. What are the questions that you wish Norwegians did ask you about Egypt? I would like to, I mean, many things, you know, uh, food, music, especially, especially music. Egypt, for a long time, you know, uh, music and, and, uh, and the cinema, the Egyptian cinema and Egyptian music scene is the biggest in the Middle East. You know, and we have a history of producing, you know, some of the best plays, movies, songs and um, footballers and, you, and football, you know, of course, <laughs> it's that. Yeah. And, and I, I wish I get questions about this. The language, of course, you know, the Arabic language. And uh, um, and I, I'm, I'd be really, really happy. I feel like, can you imagine being the expert <laughs> on Hello, Hello, Egypt? You know, to, to just answer questions about Egyptian stuff. Yeah, so stuff like that, of course, um, that would be nice. Well, I think that's actually a, a good idea for a follow-up to your your podcast. Uh, a, a series on Egypt in the Norwegian language might uh, might get yourself uh, quite the following, Mariam. 
<laughs> okay, you you mentioned already uh, a number of the the world focused festivals that are in uh, in Oslo, uh, Film Fest uh, and 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 a few others. What are your favorite things to do in the capital when you're not at work and not doing the podcast? Oh, I mean. A lot of things. I don't know. It's just walking around the botanical garden. This is probably one of the one of my favorite things to do in Norway, especially like the seasonal changes. You see this very uh, clearly when you go to the botanical garden. Mm. Um, I like to go out as well. There's a fantastic, really like shout out to a fantastic place in. Uh, in in uh, Oslo called uh, Khartoum Contemporary Arts Center and it's a lovely place they have uh, jazz every Tuesday they have concerts they have exhibitions from all around the world with a focus actually on uh, Africa and the Middle East and it's really really um, really lovely to see people as well coming and being interested you know to 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 listen to uh, uh, music from the region um I like to I like to eat a lot. I like to uh, to go to new restaurants and um, hmm. Well, I feel like everything is like food and music, food and music. <laughs> There's absolutely um, nothing wrong with that. <laughs> yeah, I uh, I but I really like to travel around Norway as well. Mm. Um, I uh, as someone coming from Egypt, you know, this is a completely different landscape from the one I'm used to, and even. I could see, I don't know, maybe it's debatable, but I could definitely see a difference between the landscape in Sweden and Norway as well. And um, if we get the chance, me and my husband, to travel and explore a new place in uh, in Norway, I'm, I'm more than happy. Good stuff. Mariam, we are running out of time, so I will go to the three Questions that I ask every guest here on the Life in Norway show. So uh, quick answers, please. Uh, what's the yes. best thing about living in Norway? Uh, <laughs> uh, I'd, I'd say, oh, okay, this is very on the spot. Uh, it's the welfare state. Uh, what do you find most challenging about living here in Norway? Maybe it's the winter and the sometimes people are not as warm okay and what is your favorite place in norway whether that's a whole town or a special place high up on a mountain somewhere i would say uh, the west coast of norway west Lanna. anywhere specific um there was this magical uh, place in called styrefjell that we drove through uh, in a trip it was probably the most beautiful things I think I've ever seen. And I think that is the perfect way to end the show, Mariam. You obviously really enjoy living here in Norway. I think anybody can hear that in your voice. And I think that will actually persuade anyone who can understand Norwegian or is learning to listen to your show. Can you tell us uh, where to find the show? Yes, you can find it on Spotify. You can find it on iTunes everywhere just google hello norge and wherever your whatever your phone supports it will get it wonderful mariam thanks so much for joining us today thank you so much david 